Welcome back everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to get started with five reasons why we have a second photographer pretty much at every wedding. So the reason I say pretty much at every wedding is because our packages are split up into full day packages or smaller hourly ones. On the smaller hourly ones, there is an option for just one photographer. On most of our typical full wedding days, we have two photographers and we don't do a one photographer option. These are five reasons why we do that. So one of the major things is if we're starting at separate locations, our second photographer can start with the groom and our lead photographer starts with the bride. So usually that's how we break it up in order to get the best coverage possible because I understand when you're starting out, you may be a one person team. It may just be you and God bless, keep going because I understand how difficult it can be to be a one person team. So I'm not hating on that whatsoever. However, these are the reasons why we like having that second photographer start at a separate location because if not, if you're going to be going from one location then to the other location and hope that there's no traffic, especially here in LA County, that's a big hope. It may throw off the entire day right from the beginning. So by having that second photographer start at a separate location, getting all the photos that need to be captured there, remembering to sync everybody. TNK team, remembering to sync <laughs> AM, PM, all that. Make sure you sync to time.gov. That's usually what we do when we start in separate locations. That is a huge help. Uh, after they finish doing all the photos there, the second photographer usually heads over to the church or wherever the ceremony is going to be held, and they start to get the ground rules from that place. So if it's a church, a Catholic church, it's going to be a 97-year-old lady that's going to yell at you when you do the wrong thing. So let's get the rules beforehand. That way, we don't get in trouble. And that way, when the lead photographer gets there, there's no going back and forth or trying to find whoever's responsible, they just go straight to the second photographer and go, hey, what's the deal? And they get the rundown. So that's a very key thing about starting in different locations and then meeting up and how much that really helps. Now, segue into shooting the ceremony together, a beautiful thing or a great thing, which is number two of five, is having a backup just in case, God forbid, something happens to your camera. Now, granted, we always shoot with a camera with two memory cards that is a non-negotiable with our team it's not something that we like to take any chances with however god forbid something happens to the camera and it completely everything disappears at least having that second photographer will give you a big sizable backup of the entire day so that is just backup to the backup to the backup you know situation but it is good to have so having that second photographer for that reason is can be a lifesaver and going off of that shooting the ceremony number three different angles. So as you're seeing right now, a lot of the times the lead photographer is going to be shooting that dead center straight on, making sure that we get that direct angle right from the middle. And then the second photographer is usually shooting from one of the sides. That way we know that our angles are covered. That way they can capture candidates of usually what we say is the first two or three rows. And that way there's just different variations than just that center position. The lead photographer, we usually encourage them to stay in that center position because you never know. Sometimes a, a ceremony can last 30 minutes, an hour. Usually it's on the timeline, but sometimes I've been to a ceremony that was literally 25 seconds and I'm not exaggerating. It was just straight out of Robin Hood, men in tights, Mary to you, Robin to you, and boom. And if we weren't prepared with people on different areas, that could have been a really difficult situation. So having that second photographer with that second angle is just a great asset to have. Number four, this goes off of kind of the first point, which is we can't be at two places at once. So while the lead photographer may be doing family portraits, wedding party portraits, couple session, after the ceremony, the second photographer is out there getting candidates, getting groups, getting cocktail hour, you know, food details, getting details that are hanging out, getting the photo booth that's out there going into the reception room, doing the reception room photos, all these things that sometimes, most of the times as a lead, we don't have the freedom or time to be able to get that after we do all those portraits. Because usually we have maybe five minutes and then they open the doors. So having that second photographer is imperative, especially during this section. Uh, it's, it's extremely difficult, nearly impossible to get all that to the degree that we want with the amount of detail that we want and get all the portraits without feeling like we're sacrificing something. And number five is wedding party. It helps tremendously to expedite things if we have that second photographer. Because let's say we're doing bride and groom and they have 
five and five or six and six or 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 sometimes we have ten and ten or where do you find ten friends? I don't have ten friends. In any case, that's a really nice time to have that second photographer when it's especially when it's a larger wedding party because then we can split up and they can cover the groom and his side. And then the lead photographer will do the bride and her side, and that way we can release them, and they can go and either go and help set up what they need to do for the reception, or they can go and relax, or you know, a lot of the times they have kids, so they can go and tend to the kids. So it's a nice way of moving things efficiently. And I think to sum it all up, that is the biggest part about having that second photographer, is being able to move things more efficiently. Can you shoot a wedding by yourself? Absolutely. Is it gonna be a lot more stressful? Absolutely. So instead of doing that, I would rather have my team that I know and I trust. There are times where we finish shooting the ceremony and oh, they're already gone. They know where they need to be. And that, that happens more often than not. And that is the five reasons why we always have a second photographer at our weddings. Let me know if I, I'm sure I missed something. There's more than five. Listen, I don't want to make these videos 30 minutes long. I think that Keeping it concise is, is the best. So leave a comment below on anything that maybe I've missed, other things that you guys have ran into, things that has been a lifesaver. Uh, I always like hearing what you guys have to mention. Actually, on one of the videos previously, I posted about shooting with dogs and somebody mentioned, and it seems so like, duh, obviously, but the clicker. Uh, they left a comment. I ordered the clicker right then and there. So uh, leave a comment below. Let me know, you know anything that you guys have ran into, uh, anything that you guys want to watch. But uh, for now, we're going to leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching.